so, so you can start figuring out who's who, who's, who's writing what. So we'll uh, we'll open up the questioning with uh, with Austin on the front row right here. Okay. Austin Ward from ESPN.com. Uh, just to dive right in, is there such a thing as having too many quarterbacks on your roster? Wow, yeah, it's, uh, that's a great question, one, that, one that's been uh, asked quite a bit, and, uh, you know, I don't know, you know, I think, uh, you know, the good part, those guys uh, understand, their, you know, it's an interesting group, uh, a little bit I've been around them, great young men, hard working, and there's a tremendous bond between all three of them, which is a great tribute to, uh, you know, Tom, what he, what he was able to put together, Coach Meyer and the staff, and, um, you know, they compete hard because they want to win and they want to play, but they also help each other. And uh, so I think it'll be interesting. I'm excited to get to get a chance to get to know the guys and uh, look forward to seeing really what develops. But, you know, I don't know. It's kind of a good problem to probably have right now, isn't it? So, how, how appealing is that to a coach to want to you obviously see the amount of talent you could come work with? Was that a selling point for you aside from going to work for the national champs and all the other things? Well, yeah, I mean, that's a part of it. I think this is, you know, the Ohio State University, right? And growing up in Ohio, it's a dream come true to be able to come here and work with uh, Coach Meyer and, and really all the staff. I mean, these guys do a great job in, in the culture of the program, and, and it's what, what I believe in. And, and uh, I'm, I'm really excited. Front row middle, Bill. Bill Rubino, from the Clubs Dispatch. Could you uh, describe the process of how you do the job and your Buckeye High, how big a Buckeye family? Yeah, you know, uh, it was interesting, obviously, being in the Big Ten, coming from the University of Nebraska, so there was always a, a tie, you know, uh, recently. Um, and then uh, knowing Ed Warner as well, with Ed and I working together at the University of Kansas, and uh, Coach Meyer and I crossed paths really early in my career when I was a high school coach. He recruited one of my players to Florida, and uh, so I've known him for, for a while, and, uh, you know, just kind of always crossed paths and seen each other, and... And uh, so it's just kind of how it worked out. I think when Tom had his opportunities to go, they were they were looking for a guy and, and coach quarterbacks. Maybe had the Ohio roots, um, recruiting Texas possibly, knowing the Big Ten conference. So I think you know it was a, a pretty good marriage, um, and I think that started it and started that process. You know, as far as be, you know, you know th this is the university, right? This is the place. So when you grow up. And uh, even though Youngstown a little bit further away, it's, it, you always watch it. You know, it was always great uh, to watch the big game. And I mean, you just know everything about the university and what it stands for. And it's just, uh, again, just a great honor to be here. And how would you kind of describe yourself as a coach? What's important to you? Um, you know, you know, I believe in uh, our guys. I mean, they got to be accountable. You know, we got to build trust. They got to be tough. I mean, I think toughness, that's the one thing. Uh, somebody asked me the other day, I said, Coach, what was it like watching the championship game or the game versus Alabama? What did you notice? I said, I noticed how tough Ohio State was, you know, just physically, mentally tough. And growing up in that environment, that's that's really important. It's kind of, you know, my roots. And, uh, you know, just I think that's that's important, you know, being accountable, saying who you are, being, having integrity. You know, if you're going to do something, you do it. And so, um, you know, that, a little bit like that. Taking over an offense that scored a lot of points, put up a lot of yards last year, particularly in those last three games. How much of a challenge is it to improve upon that along with that? Yeah, yeah, obviously I think the first thing you gotta do is you gotta keep challenging the returning players. You gotta motivate them. Uh, you gotta keep pushing them. And that's gonna be probably the biggest uh, Besides that, developing the younger players. I think those two things are going to be very uh, paramount for what happens. Um, we scored a lot of points. We were a, an extremely efficient offense, but we weren't perfect. And you, you strive for perfection. That's how I am. I'm going to strive for that. I know Ed's the same way. And, uh, you know, we're just going to keep pushing our guys and pushing our guys and pushing our guys. I mean, that's, that's the key to it. they got to keep working to get better and wanting to get better. Back row left, Steve. Yeah, Coach. Steve Hellwagon with 24-7 Sports. Uh, just the question I have is you take this job and you have to go in and recruit Joe Burrow and Torrance Gibson and build relationships and perhaps you are already recruiting one or both those guys in Nebraska. Just go through that whole process with both those guys, the ups, the downs, the 
what you had to sell them on, what they needed to find out about you and all that. Yeah, you know, it's uh, I knew of those guys. Um, at the University of Nebraska, we, we had to commit early. And it took us out of the race for a 2015 quarterback. So as the recruiting process, because um, he committed, I think, in February, around this time a year ago, <clears throat> that we, we kind of backed off those guys. But I knew of them. Stayed in touch with some guys here and there, but uh, they they were aware. I've seen guys be at my areas when I would be out on the road recruiting or as offensive coordinator. I'd go see all the offensive guys, so I might swing by a school here, or swing by a school there to see a guy to check in on them. So um, there were relationships. Uh, Joe, obviously, uh, you know, has strong ties to Nebraska with his family, um, and so being able to get into his home and just kind of letting them know the lay of the land of what actually took place in our process over there um, to be able to just sit down and spend time with them, really, and just get them the chance to see who I am, get a chance to know them and the family, and the same with Torrance. You know, I think it was, we, we knew Torrance uh, at, at the University of Nebraska. We recruited a player even two years ago, and when he was there, we, we, we saw him practice it and those types of things. But, again, it was one of those things we kind of, really weren't looking for quarterbacks at the time. We went and uh, had the opportunity just to sit down and visit with mom and, and go every every time I could go out, I went and saw those guys. And with upperclassmen in front of them, what's been the talk about redshirting those guys? It seemed like an obvious decision, but you never know what you're treating. Never know, right? Yeah. You never know. One play away, you never know. Cardell Jones is going to win the national title for you, right? I mean, you just never know. So that's what you tell them. And, they're going to develop, you know, under Coach Meyer's system here and what he's done everywhere he's ever been. Quarterbacks have been extremely, extremely successful. And I think they saw that. They thought they, they saw the opportunity to come and play in an offense where they could get better. They saw a chance to play at a program that's going to develop them as young men and student athletes. And they, want, they wanted to be here at the, the Ohio State University. So um, my hat's off to them. They're going to compete. And, and our guys know they're going to compete. So. Front row middle, Dave. Hi, Tim. Dave Bill from Bucknuts. Along those same lines about Joe Burrow, there was a lot of talk that he was um, maybe not offended, but disappointed that Nebraska never stepped up with an offer. Um, did you have to do a lot of smoothing over there with him after you took the job here at Ohio State? Yeah, more discussions than smoothing over. I think once they realize, I mean, when you're working at a university, you obviously support the university and what's going on. And, you know, once once we made the change and we came here, we were able to disclose a little bit kind of how all the process took place, the numbers, how we were recruiting, who we were getting, those types of things. And I think once they, they saw that and saw it as genuine, it was a, here, here's what happened, I think, I think they felt really comfortable. And then as we got to know each other, I think, I, I know they know, they felt really good about it. And I know he doesn't have a, a super strong arm, but he seems like he does so many things well. Just talk about his game a little bit. Yeah, more. coach's kid, tough, you know, he's a, I got a chance one day to watch him play basketball. What a competitor. I mean, driven, just there's sometimes guys that can jump higher or run faster or whatever in that game, but boy, he was just playing his guts out. And you gotta love that. I mean, he's a coach, his kid, and he's smart. He brings a lot of it factor and intangible to him. And uh, a lot of times those are the guys that end up being very successful as quarterbacks because they're gonna they're gonna put the grind in, they're gonna put that work in to be able to be that guy. And final uh, questions. Uh, front row Tim. Uh, Tim May comes dispatch. First on Burrow, did you tell him it was Bo Pelini's fault? No. <laughs> no. I'm just joking. Uh, uh, as, as you go into your meeting room now, do, do, you, do you set your players in seats? This is the first guy, second guy, third guy, fourth guy. Are you that kind of coach? And uh, number two, uh, well, I'll ask you number two first. I mean, but how, how do you kind of arrange things? No, right now, um, I'm trying to meet them more as people not as position depth chart type guys. I'm trying to get to know them a little bit, get, let them get to know me. You know, we're, we're a little bit, you know, we're in a unique position. I mean, number one, I'm replacing a, a great guy. I mean, he did an outstanding job here, and, and uh, I'm coming in here and have to bond with, with three super young men, four, really, more than that. There's seven guys, gotten all the walk-ons, but I got to bond with all those guys in that room. And uh, before I could really coach them and reach them, I got to get to know them. And so that's kind of where I'm at at this point. The other thing, uh, it looks like, based on what, what, you, what we've been able to see, Cardale's the only one of those three 
it's probably going to be full go for the spring. How much does that kind of hamstring you trying to get an evaluation going, Tim? I mean, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if they hand. Did you see him throw? I don't know if they hand yeah. answering this. No, but you know what I mean. You just want to give all three. I think. You know, I, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Well, you know, I think that one thing is they got a lot of game experience under their belt. You know, both Braxton, um, you know, JT. I mean, those guys, they they've played a lot of ball games, took a lot of snaps. Um, you you could just put the film on, and have an opportunity to evaluate those guys a little bit. So, and and even really Cardell's, you know, played a fair amount, but. There's still growth in all of those guys. There's no question. They'll be the first ones to tell you if you had asked them. So it uh, gets a chance to maybe see some of the younger guys, what Steven could do and those things. What does the funny come down to, though, in your mind? What is the cutting line for a quarterback, a starting quarterback? What makes usually makes the difference? Winning. They got to win. They got to they got to make the guys around them better. You know, they got to not turn the ball over and get the ball to the right guys. Usually that equates to win. If, if they're making the players around them better, they're doing the right things, getting the ball to the right guys at the right time, getting us in the right protections, we're probably going to be winning. So um, that's how you're able to evaluate the, the production of a quarterback. It's the offense. It's not always him or his statistics. Front row left, Doug. Uh, Doug Lamarice with Cleveland.com. Philosophically, do you believe that you could play two quarterbacks in the fall, or do you want the guy? Well, I don't. Well, I don't know. I haven't given that a whole lot of thought. How it is, um, really haven't. And are you certain that Braxton Miller will be on the on the team in 2015? Yes. And one last question: Have you had much chance to talk with Braxton? So oh yeah. Oh. Absolutely. Back row, Ari. Last question. Right here. Ari Walsh from Cleveland.com. Sorry. Um, Lawrence Gibson um, is obviously one of the more highly rated guys that's in your class right now. Um, but a lot of programs were recruiting him as an athlete, not necessarily as a quarterback. When you watch his film, what makes you so sure that that's the right position for him, and how do you break down the way he plays that position? I, I think he's a special player with the ball in his hand. There's no question about it. And Again, some of the things I talked about winning, you know, he's able to make the players around him better. He's able to move the offense. Um, you know, like all quarterbacks, even the guys we have here, there's still some mechanical things or technique things or knowledge things that they still have to pick up in order to function at the highest level that they can. Joe, Torrance, they're, they're no different. They're going to have to come in. They're going to have to learn. They're going to have to improve. They're going to have to maybe do a couple of things different than what they normally have done. But, Athleticism, talent-wise, intangible-wise, he's a he's a winner. He's another guy. He's won championships. He's been able to go into a program and turn that program around and win. It takes something to be able to do that, and I believe that. I think when a guy's a Division One top-notch quarterback, he's got to get people around him to play that way and win. And and that's part of being tough. And it's part of part of all the things that we had talked about up here a little bit earlier. What I stand for and believe in, and and I think he possesses those things. All right, thank you. Thank you. Folks, we'll move up to the...